All right, so very quickly then. So we have the investigators, so they're the data creators. All right. The contact, no, is not. You yes, yes. Or ampersand. My, my mantra is choose a format. If, if you're doing it for your own organization, choose a format and stick to it, consistency, providing it complies with all um, the components that are needed. So 2015 is when um, it was made available. How can I tell that? How did I tell that? Does the data restrict it? Yeah. Oh, and I can't oh, do it because it's, yeah, on the actual thing, if you went to the live record, you would actually get a bit more, um, oh, naughty. <laughs> no, go to the course page and uh, data citation number one. But anyway, 2015 is there, all right, it does actually have a date. Um, you're taking the title from the top, you can see what it is, all right. And you use all of it because the more you have all the way down to Polar Stern arc is more explanatory, therefore it makes it more discoverable. Um, people may be looking for Polar Stern rather than thinking about aerosols. So, you know, it, that makes it more discoverable. Oh, I've missed a data set, and forgive me, I've missed out the... And this is the problem with citations, I missed out the square bracket at the end of that. Um, the uh, repository is Bicodema. This is the URL that you got for the record. This is the landing page URL, Bicodema. And I, acce I accessed it yesterday. Okay. Now what you will find, some citation formats put available, colon, in front of this, and said accessed, colon, and the date there. So formatting citations, but I think what is important is to get the right elements into the data citation, okay? So that's the first one. I think you realize now that you can only build a citation if you've got the metadata. And the more richer the metadata, the better it is that you can make a citation properly. So that's why you had that exercise about compiling metadata, how important it is, because it's actually part of this data publication um, exposure, if you like. I just want to talk very quickly about static and living data sets because we, we mentioned it earlier. We always assume that data sets are, that are cited are static and they're single agents, single organizations, but they're not. Um, a lot of them are huge scientific data sets and they're international data sets. So, a data citation infrastructure is required that's capable of supporting these sorts of identifiers that can precisely identify subsets and subsets of larger data collections, etc. So I just wanted you to understand that there is, are problems in citing living data sets. Um, and mostly this, of course, is, is a problem that the data centers have, and they really haven't resolved the issue because of these issues of granularity, versioning, unique identification, metadata, and review. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but just to show you that this discussion really started in about 2010, and it was an early project um, that the IODE uh, did in partnership with the Scientific um, Committee on Oceanic Research and the LBM, LBL, MBL Huey Library and the British Oceanographic. It was about looking at uh, data related to journal articles and um, allocating a, a PI to them and data in uh, data centres being packaged and served. The first one was journal articles and MBL did very well. They worked with the Bico Demo data centre um, they allocated DOIs to the data sets. They became a very early adopter. I mean, in 2010, they were an early adopter. Now, it's very standard to allocate DOIs to data sets, but, or more standard, let's say that. But in 2010, they were very early. So what we have is the, the, the article being linked to the data set and the data set to the article uh, above. 
and Science Direct, which was a real coup in that at that time. Science Direct actually recorded on their database the link to the uh, uh, the uh, who. I'm not going to get this right. Wos, Wos. I want to Wos uh, record. So uh, I think that was a, 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 such a successful project. In fact, yes, Jim. The second case is the data centre. They implemented a published data library. They took a snapshot of um, specially chosen data sets and it went through vigorous version control and it became a fixed copy, a fixed copy of something that was actually part of a living data set and they used uh, standards from the NERC data centres in fact. And they obtained their DOIs from the British Library for the, and I know that they got those for free from the British Library but of course they are a UK organisation so that would have uh, probably helped and there's the uh, record there in fact. But what was successful about the project was that um, there was an ocean data publication cookbook issued, it's part of the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission Manuals and Guides, number 64. It provides step-by-step -step directions on the data publication process and allocating DOIs and where you get DOIs, etc. So I, I do encourage you to have a look at this because it actually helps its small organisations. It's not just for huge organisations. So people with limited staff can actually follow the procedures here. And it does give examples of best practices for publication and citation. But another manual that I really, really want you to look at as well, not now obviously, but um, in your own time, is the How to Cite Datasets from the Digital Curation Centre. This is an excellent, uh, there are two manuals that I'm going to tell you about, and these are so easily readable, so easily understandable. They're both published in 2015, so they're bang up to date. So you really are getting the very latest um, knowledge. But what is noted in there, and I, I think it's coming out with what we're going to talk about, and Dunstan's made the point, citations to data tend to differ according to the community of practice. So if you're a chemist, it's different to if you're a biologist, it's different to if you are a physical oceanographer, different if you are humanities, social sciences. So it differs to the community of practice. So the recommended style is often that of the repository that hosts the data or the journal. Because in your repository, you will give, you will have a recommended data citation. That was part of the uh, metadata exercise that you were doing. At the bottom, although we didn't see it, um, there was a field for actually putting in a data citation. So here we are, exactly what um, Dunstan said. This is the same data set, and look how different uh, are the citations formats for them. I mean, you might even recognise that they were the same, the same data. And then on the other side, you've got repositories and the different formats that they're using to cite data sets. So, data citation standard, um, yes, but there are many, many standards. Um, your journal may define that they want you to follow Oxford, or they may define that they want you to follow Dataverse. You will find that that makes, makes, the, uh, makes the choice for you, in fact. But within your own organisation, know what format you want to use, and stick to it. So here I've, I've given some recommended uh, formats. Uh, we, you've seen both of them before, but it has all the elements, it has the author, the release date, the title, the version, the media type, the repository, the persistent identifier and when you assessed it. Always good practice for a URL is to um, use the URL to the landing page, don't go to the data download URL. This is the main question I wanted to ask, for the landing page or for the data set? Landing page, because then you get access to all the data, uh, the metadata. Sorry. Okay, exercise, and you're going to only have ten minutes. There are seven, and this is also on the course page. So please, data citation two exercise. Um, I want you to uh, do as many of these citations as you can. There is the live link there that will take you to the record. I just want you to compile citations to those data sets. 
not going to give you very long, and if you don't do more than one or two, that's fine. I just want to get the feel of looking at a metadata record and pulling out the core elements for the citation.